Hey, hey, CDA, and welcome back to Old World. I'm having a lot of fun with this game, and I hope you're enjoying this series as well. So if you do, don't forget to like the episodes and let me know in the comments anything you want to ask, anything you want to comment. Keep in mind that I am pre-recording these, so it might take me a couple of episodes to catch up to your comments. Um, and it's taking me a little bit longer to make these episodes. Well, not the production of these episodes, but actually getting further into the game because there is so much to explain. And we have another very good example of that coming up. And I do want to kind of keep you uh, informed of what I'm doing and what decisions I'm making because this is kind of doubling as a tutorial and a let's play. So it makes it easier for you to follow along what I'm doing and why I'm doing it most importantly. Right now, we have a problem because we had this event and our son actually ran off with his girlfriend, which also happens to be the heir to the throne of Carthage, by the way. Um, this seems to be a very good thing or a very bad thing waiting to happen. I mean, if he would actually come back, because he is now missing uh, with, I don't know, uh, married to her, for example, that would actually strengthen our relationship with Carthage by a lot. Uh, but we don't know how this is going to turn out. We are going to tell Persia the truth, I think, and get some discontent reduction and some discipline bonus for ourselves, uh, rather than getting more civics, which we don't really have a use for. But 160 civics is a lot, although it's only going to be three turns worth of that, and this is going to double our current income. So let's go for this instead. That does pose us with a new problem, though, because we currently don't have an heir. And our wife, which is lovely, and also leading the um, the armory, army currently, our slinger army. Um, she's too old to have any more children. So we could have her have an accident. Or we could simply divorce her and look for a new wife instead that's a little bit younger. And that could father us, or well, not father us, our new heir. That's what we are going to do, but give birth to a new heir for us instead. Now, sometimes you have different options of dealing with this. But right now we have a very small family. That's kind of how Persia starts, um, but some other starts might have a large, much larger family. Right now, we only have another daughter, but she's a bastard, so she's excluded from any form of succession. Uh, we could change the law, which could basically uh, change us from going to the eldest child, to the youngest child, to the siblings, etc., etc. Et but as you can see, none of this will actually give us an heir, uh, with the exception of seniority, that's the eldest member of our family inheriting the throne um, but our father is already 93 so this is not very likely going to solve our problem so we're going to need um, children basically one way or another if we don't have any children and we die or we don't have an heir I should say and we die we actually instantly lose the game so this is not just uh, some minor event to resolve no this is a very important choice now, I think I'm actually just going to divorce her uh, killing her off is the cheap option, <laughs> at least in the short term. Uh, but these events are probably not going to be good. And I just want to make sure we don't take any unnecessary risks in this case. So we are going to have the Mirinids not be very happy with us. But what we can actually do is we can try and marry right back into their family. Just to offset the reduction of um, opinion there. So how do you do that? You can actually uh, click on your character and... Do a marriage proposal to a foreign country. So, for example, we could say to Rome, hey, maybe you have someone that we would like to marry. Um, or we can do it with the families, or we can actually take someone from our court instead. Now, we can actually just go to the mirrors and say, hey, do you have anyone that wants to marry us and maybe give us some more children? Uh, that would actually offset uh, the reputation hit that we just took. Not completely, but at least a large part of that. And just make sure we are safe in that regard. Because we do have several, at least one city. Um, let's see, which one is it? It's actually our capital, is it? <laughs> so we don't want uh, to get too much on the bad side for sure. Uh, speaking of our capital, we should set some production in there and we probably want to make sure we can get this city up and running sooner rather than later. This is our growth hub, so we are going to be producing another settler and take our fifth city by doing so. Uh, what else do we need to do? We also need to set some production over here. And I think a miner over here is probably going to be good. I don't necessarily want more military. We have a slinger here now already. 
Um, more workers. We already have two working here, so no. And well, we could actually go for a festival instead as well. That would add some more culture production. Um, which would help to get us going towards our five developing cities. Um, but I'm actually, I, we might do that at a later point, but these festivals are really underwhelming. Uh, it's just one production per year. That's not a lot. It's 50% more than we have, I know. But there's there's a lot more efficient ways to get culture than this. Although you can get this very early on, so then it does add up in the long term. But let's, let's just make a miner over here. I do want to have another um, a shrine, most likely. Either here or here, or both. Um, so let's make sure this is going to be a miner over here. It will also give us some more um, science production. So having more of these civilians going is always a good thing. We're also going to want to make sure we keep... Um, Oh, we actually got a promotion. And this is the reason I didn't want to kill our wife. Because she is a general in our army. So we can make her a herbalist. We can make her swift. That will allow her to move further. Or we can have her gain more discipline. And I'll actually give our slinger even more experience every year as well. Um, let's just go for the experience. Having more, on your, uh, more experience on your armies is always a good thing. And let's take this unit out by doing this as well. Uh, I'm going to spend my rest of my orders uh, improving my terrain. That's not necessarily the most interesting things to watch. I, I do try to keep these episodes uh, as fast-paced as I can, given the type of game that we're playing. It's worth pointing out that I'm building an Odeon over here. And that's going to give us a lot more culture to our capital. But placing these buildings down strategically is really important. Because this will actually buff the... Um, um, nearby hamlets that we're going to be building pretty soon as well once we get a few more uh, technologies going and making sure that you have several hamlets close to your Odeon really helps you kind of give a stacking buff we have a nice open area around here so that's what we're going to do no I do not want to cancel that no I still do not want to cancel that um, so planning your your progression out is definitely an important part of your city's mid-game. Uh, the more s uh, specialists you get, the more civilians you get, citizens I should say, uh, the more of these urban territories you need to have. And this is one way to improve those. So this is, uh, once you have your, uh, set your worker selected, you can select urban improvements. Uh, so shrines count as that as well. And you have several other options. But basically you need to make sure that you keep expanding your city and don't just put farms everywhere and mines and stuff like that because that in the end will uh, come back to bite you but to be honest there's so much room in each of your um, territories you should have ample of room to do both just make sure that you are able to connect these territories up because these urban centers do tend to need to fit together Okay, so a couple of important things are happening. First of all, we have reports of a tribal raid from a Danish outpost near Parsa. So we, we have some incoming enemies near our capital. We have our uh, military stations very close by, so this shouldn't be a problem. But it's something to be aware of. This will happen even if you're friends with the tribals around you. Uh, every now and then they will send a raid to one of your cities and you will need to defend yourself. We also um, have become severely ill. Uh, and that apparently means we now have a 70% chance to die. Uh, okay, that's that's not good. Uh, we also have a 40% chance of removing severely ill. Uh, but this could be the end of this, this run. Uh, out of nowhere, so not, nothing we've done. Uh, but I'm a little worried now that we are in, in danger of instantly uh, losing the game. But uh, anyway, uh, our grandfather is now also dead. So we definitely have no one else to succeed us. So that's uh, that's interesting. And we have a new head of the family. So a lot of things happening once again um, that we just need to take into account and make sure that we don't leave our capital undefended, for example. Luckily, we did get an answer to our marriage question. And we have two options. We can either <laughs> marry back with the, the, the woman that we just divorced. So that's an interesting option to get. Uh, or we can go for a much younger version of her. She's only 30 years old 
and she actually has pretty nice statistics so wisdom charisma and courage all in positive numbers she's bold and gracious uh, so I think she makes a pretty good marriage option. So let's go for that. Um, she's already 30, so she won't have a lot of time to give us any children. But at the same time, neither do we, because apparently we are severely ill. So this is going to be uh, interesting for sure. And just to add to the family drama even further, our father died. And we now have to pick what to do with that. So... Let's just add it up. Our son went missing, we divorced our wife, we married someone new, and our father died. Um, that's that's one busy year. Let's see. Um, we can either spend some civics to gain a huge boost of culture in Parsa, and I'm really liking this option actually. Or we can do the same and get a huge discontent reduction. Also useful, although I'm not entirely worried about discontent at this moment. Or we can keep mourning. Uh, we'll lose quite a bit of orders per turn, but we'll also get a huge amount of experience per turn instead. Um, tempting. Tempting. This is probably not a uh, permanent uh, trait to get. So this basically is just saying, well, just give us a lot of experience per year. Um, but I think we'll go for the culture bonus instead. And, well, in order to um, fix our succession problem, we could actually adopt someone. Will we adopt this? Mm -mm -mm. This is not necessarily a strong character to have as our heir. So I'm just going to say no and hope we don't die. Meanwhile, we're still on track with trying to uh, kick these barbarians out. So let's make sure we also keep working on that. We do need to be a little bit aware of how we're spending our orders because we don't have an infinite amount of them. We'll have this chariot coming in really soon as well. So that should help us defend against wherever these Danes are coming from. Probably from over here, actually. So that's quite convenient in terms of where we're located. Or even maybe from over here. So our army should be aligned very uh, conveniently to defend. We actually found the edge of the continent over here as well. We've done a lot of exploring over here. And as you can see, the map is quite large. Really like that. There's uh, plenty of room to explore and conquer and do whatever we want in that regard. Um, at the same time, that does mean that Carthage and Assyria have a lot of room to expand. Um, let's see, how are they doing actually? Five weak cities. Um, only two cities at the moment. Carthage has five cities. So we're, we are keeping up with them so far. Uh, Rome only has three cities. So all in all, um, we're not doing all that bad. And our chariot is here. And as you can see, uh, it has a massive movement range. So this is why all this open terrain on our territory is going to come in handy. And we can produce more of these in the city if we want so moving this over here is going to be very convenient um i can't actually reach it just yet uh, let me double check is this a melee <laughs> i actually forgot what i was making um no this is a melee unit it does have the cell burn upgrade because we built it in a hunter city which is really cool because we can flank units now. So, for example, uh, if we would go around and we can kind of flank this. Um, this that's, I, I think that's how that works anyway. Um, you go shoot and you go take this out. And now we have taken uh, control of another city site. So we can actually move the settler here if that's what we want to do. Um... To be honest, we might as well, because we do have some interesting resources over here. We have pigs. Uh, that's just kind of like the sheep we have over here. But we do have honey. Uh, which we can't actually take yet, because we need land consolidation. Just like we need for the olives over here. And I think the citrus as well over here. Uh, so that's... if we, Whenever we get access to that, that technology, that's going to be a priority. Um, but at the same time, there's not really anything of interest down here. So that this just might just be a more strategic location. Also because it's close to all the other city sites. 
So we do want to expand in this direction sooner rather than later. Now you don't instantly get access to the luxury resources if you build an improvement on them. You actually still need to build uh, the, the specialist on it. So in this case we are going to build a miner on top of the salt that we have here close to our third city. I think this was the third one anyway. Um, and that should give us access to our first luxury resource as well. Now another interesting way to upgrade your cities is through these acolytes. Um, because we have the paganism in our city over here and we have a shrine now over here as well we can actually start building an acolyte and that will not only give us a lot of culture and science per year but it actually allows us to upgrade these into master acolytes and i think some um, senior acolytes something or something like that after that that give us even a larger production bonuses so very interesting to do definitely worth it uh, just make sure you time it uh, in a logical moment in your your production chain alternatively we could actually make some disciples as well that will allow us to build uh, monasteries temples and so on uh, and that's another very nice way to up your production i think we we might do this in our capital instead because we have all the growth over there uh, and i'll just go for the acolyte in this temple over here first and we are now getting to the more mid-game technologies and as you can see we we have the ability now to actually get uh, automation on our scouts we can uh, build our first ships which could be interesting considering we are coastal uh, and we could also build spearmen which are quite more advanced than the units we currently have a doctrine is still way too expensive to consider but however i do think the obvious answer here is going to go for the free settler it's only takes, going to take us two turns and it will save us a lot of hassling with the settler we're already producing one so that basically means we get a free settler for this one uh, as well as a settler for this side over here and then we are pretty much good to go we will have six cities and we can fully focus on getting our economy up and going and well, in the meanwhile make sure we don't die in the process now let's take out this unit with our chariot just because we can there we go and that takes care of all the barbarians i don't actually see the danes coming in just yet the rate that was announced earlier but i think we should be seeing them over the next few turns Oh man, I thought this was going to be an episode about optimizing our economics and things like that. Uh, but apparently this is turning into one big family drama. Because because we are ill, we now have a Hagrid crone appearing before our court. And basically what she can do is cure us. She only has one prize, a child of royal blood. Well, we have one of those that is missing. Um, but we have another one of those, which is our daughter, our bastard daughter. Which can't actually follow us on the throne. Uh, but we can apparently give her away and reclaim our own vigor. So that would mean she becomes missing as well. Seems to be a trend for my children. Um, our wife won't necessarily uh, appreciate this, but we will no longer be ill. And this is a very good way of fixing the fact that we're ill, which is very dangerous because there's a high chance that we will actually die in return. Um, which is not a good thing if you don't have an heir. But... This will actually also be, uh, let our wife become estranged from us. That will lower her opinion of us, which is not too high to begin with. And that will actually lower the chance that she will carry our child. Not so strange. If women don't like you, they don't tend to bear your children. So, um, yeah. The other option is that we say, that's so cruel, we don't do it. We'll actually get her to fall in love with us by doing so. We'll actually gain some charisma on top of that. Um, and that will raise her um, opinion of us by a lot, 120, so that will push her above 100, uh, giving her a higher birth modifier from a gameplay perspective. So she's more likely to carry our air, but we, we will still be sick. So this is not necessarily a safe option because as long as we don't have a child, the child doesn't have to be of age or anything like that. Just, we just need to have an actual child uh, that's legitimate. Uh, in order for us to have an heir. Uh, but there's a very good chance we'll die this way. So, um, option three. And the only reason we can actually pick this is because we are charming. That's a trait we have. Uh, we can cure ourselves by simply promising uh, our daughter to the, to the Haggard Crone. But on her 18th birthday. Um, so she will become claimed. Let's see what does that actually mean. 
it doesn't actually say what it means. Uh, but it could lead to future events. So this is a very easy way to at least make sure we don't die and lose the game. Um, doesn't fix our air problem, but I, I'm, I'm leaning towards this. I mean, this seems like a very big gamble. It's obviously the uh, a politically correct choice, I suppose, not giving your child away. But we're going to go the fairy tale route, and hopefully we can do something about this when she turns 18. Well, we just got the news that we again turned ill, so once again, this could be a very short campaign. But in the meanwhile, let's focus on getting some hamlets going. So we'll need Polis, and as you can see, I really like how we have the uh, research now to get these uh, research times to a pretty short time. Uh, Port Colors is actually interesting. The moat uh, will actually make your uh, cities happier, so it's an easy way to both defend your cities as well as keep them uh, from low discontent. But again, 14 years is not something you want to spend at this point in time. So we're going to go for this one. Although arist aristocracy would still be a pretty decent option as well. I'm personally not just a huge fan of the granary. The, the two per year growth is decent. But not necessarily something I'm actively striving for. And again, for the same reason, the buff to farms is huge. But again, it's not particularly useful in my opinion. So I've started skipping the less important events, but this is actually one that's pretty impactful. So we have the poet Astiages, I suppose, and he's working on a very awesome composition. Well, the thing is, we can decide what to do with that. So we can either read it to the court, which will raise all families opinion by 40 for 80 years. Um, or we could say, well, just circulate it through the, the cities and then all our pagan cities get a huge boost to culture, or a huge, it's a pretty decent boost, and it's to all our cities, uh, as well as a significant reduction in discontent. Now, this is a very strong option, but I do find that in the current state of the game, discontent is not something to actively worry about too much. So, um, yeah, I'm actually thinking that the opinion could be useful. Normally, for the opinion, wouldn't be that much, but right now, we are at 260 with this one and 260, uh, 162 with this one. So getting 40 to those two families would actually push them both to a new range. So this one from whatever this is called, from place to friendly, I believe. Yep, yeah. and this one from friendly to... Actually, no. So it's actually maxed out at 200. So it would only be the mirror units that actually gain something from that. Okay, so in that case, the... The culture boost as well as the discontent reduction could be nice. There's actually three out of our four cities that this would affect. So yeah, let's just go for that. But this is really something to think through when you get events like this. Don't just feel like, oh, this this seems cool. Um, you'll always gain something from those bonuses. But make sure you, you kind of see to op uh, look to optimize opinions where you can. And kind of figure out, is this going to be worth it? So yeah. In this case, I don't think just getting the mirror into to 200 is going to be worth it. So we're just going to go for the instant gain. And there we go. Our daughter just turned 18 and she is now a grown woman. And someone turns up to say, hey, you promised me something a couple of years ago. Uh, I cured you. And by the way, I got sick right after once again. I'm still alive somehow. But I'm going to take your daughter with me. And we can either say to take a loss to the grave, attempt to deceive the crone with lies, or fight the crone for her. Um, that's going to be a very interesting choice, and I think that makes for a very nice cliffhanger to this episode. So, if you enjoyed this episode, let me know in the comments. Actually, let me know in the comments what you expect I will do. I will probably not be able to wait for your answers in this case to see what I should pick. But I'm definitely interested to see what you think I'm going to pick. If you're still here, you're awesome, and I hope to catch you in the next one.